150 degree compost, it's a little easier than you think with a little bit of upfront work. We're going to introduce you to something called aerated static pile composting today on this episode of Coffee and Compost. My name is Steve Churchill and I own the Urban Worm Company. Every new composter has visions of blazing hot compost. They'll maybe buy a tumbler, they'll pile up some leaves, they'll take some food scraps, they'll put all the stuff together either in a pile or in the tumbler, and then they'll come back a few days later and then nothing. There's no breakdown of the material, there's no exciting like rise in temperature, and they get discouraged and quit. Now this is normal. It's actually kind of difficult for a household to create a true hot compost pile. What most likely is happening is people are just taking leaves and household food waste, kind of putting them together, and then just letting it break down over time. This is for two reasons. Now first, most households are probably not producing enough nitrogen-rich organic waste to generate the heat to get a thermophilic hot compost pile going. Secondly, if they are producing enough nitrogen-rich waste, then they may actually see a rise in temperature. The pile may get warm, it may even get hot, but then they're likely to see the temperatures come back down again. This is because a hot compost pile needs to be turned. Composting is an aerobic process, meaning it needs oxygen. The microbes that made that pile hot are consuming that oxygen. So if you're not turning the pile to introduce more air into it, then what happens is the microbes consume that oxygen, the oxygen gets depleted, the composting stops, and the temperature comes back down again. Now, I'm a lazy composter, and I'm pretty undisciplined. You can ask my mom, or you can ask my wife. Now, I would never remember to turn a hot compost pile every couple days. And I don't think I'd even want to go through the physical labor to do it anyway. So I ask a bounce house blower and some PVC pipe to do the hard work for me with a process called aerated static pile composting. And I love it. Aerated static pile or ASP composting replaces the need to turn a hot compost pile. Instead, we are just gonna pump that air straight into it. Now our system at the Urban Worm Company is more of an aerated static bin system than a pile, but the principles are still the same. We use a bounce house blower motor that pumps air into a pipe, which then splits into three other pipes that go underground and then back into each of our three aerated static bins. The air goes through a shutoff valve into each of these three bins, which allows us to control air, meaning we don't have to pump air into three different piles at once. We normally have one or two piles going at any given time. These pipes go underground and then tee off into two different pipes, which then uh, are routed into the aerated static bin. They pop up, uh, then they make a 90 degree angle, and basically these pipes are sitting on grade inside this bin. Uh, the ends of the pipes are capped, uh, so air doesn't ex escape just out of the ends. So these pipes are capped, but then we also have holes that are drilled in the top, which is what delivers the air into the pile. On top of these pipes, we put a layer of wood chips, which helps diffuse the air. Otherwise, you'd get these uh, just columns of air that would dry out the pile and ultimately create these uh, escape routes for the air. We want to keep as much of that air in the pile and getting it suffused through the pile as much as possible. Above the wood chips, which we also call the plenum layer, is our active layer, and this is the material that we're actively trying to compost. In our case, we compost spent brewer's grains from a local brewery, and we mix them with uh, wood chips in a certain ratio, and we put them in there as the active layer. Once the ASP is filled with the wood chips and the grains, it's time for us to put it on air. Uh, which means this is when we start delivering air on a certain schedule. In our case, we have a timer set to turn that bounce house blower motor on for about 45 seconds every 30 minutes. From there, all we do is watch the temperatures rise via a standard compost thermometer or a digital probe that we've inserted into the pile. We normally expect that the pile is going to get above 140 degrees within the first 48 hours, and it should stay there for at least three to four weeks. So if the temperature crashes at like 10 to 15 degrees per day, we know something's wrong. We know we're giving it enough air. We know that we've given it enough carbon and nitrogen with the wood chips and the brewer's grains. Uh, so the next thing that we are thinking about is water. And typically when the temperature crashes for us, it's because the pile has gotten too dry. All of that heat uh, does create a lot of vapor and there is a fair amount of moisture loss in the process. Normally for us, we find that uh, watering the pile for a good four to five minutes on a shower setting is gonna fire that pile right back up again and we're gonna see the temperatures, uh, temperatures increase. 
So while there's some moisture loss during composting, there's also a lot of volume loss. And we find that after the fourth week or so, uh, that pile is about a third smaller than it was when we started. And we never had to turn the pile at all. Now, one weird thing about my system is that it's indoors. Most composting is done and should be done outdoors because of the vapors, uh, well, the odors and the vapors. So my barn that we're in right now is mostly made out of wood. And the last thing you want to do is, is over time, have a ton of hot vapors that are just going to eventually rot out the wood in your barn. I'm standing on the second floor of my barn right now. The ASP is right below me. So I have to make sure for my own safety that I manage that moisture. So what we've done is taken a, a dryer vent and attached it to the top of our ASP. And this dryer vent's attached to another PVC pipe which is attached to an inline uh, fan, which pulls the, uh, the hot air uh, out, of the, uh, out of the ASP and basically dumps it, uh, dumps it outside of the barn where it can't do my structure any damage. One thing we find though, is there is a lot of water, of course, when you bring this, uh, bring this stuff out of the ASP. Uh, and there's a lot of condensation. So as the vapor leaves, it cools and it condenses and we have to make sure that there is a catch uh, for that condensation. So before, the, before it goes through a fan, there is kind of a condensate line that we've attached uh, before, our, um, before our fan, which then dumps the water outside. Now, our whole reason for doing composting here at the Urban Worm Company is to prepare organic material to be consumed by worms. Any sort of vermicomposting operation at scale typically needs hot composting before it. And so that's why we have an ASP in the first place. So after this four to six week process, we end up taking material out of these aerated static bins and feeding it into our commercial uh, CFT that's manufactured by Michigan Soil Works. For regular composters at that four, four to six week mark, they would stop the aeration and let the pile cure. Uh, or they might uh, take that material, put it into another pile for curing, which allows them to then start another ASP. Okay guys, compared to hot composting, ASP is a little bit more work up front, but it saves you a lot in the long run. In the beginning, yes, you're gonna have to maybe buy some equipment and you're gonna have to go through the labor and the expense of building one of these, either these piles or these, uh, these bin systems. But again, you never have to turn this pile. And so I highly recommend it for anybody who wants to kind of take their composting beyond the hobby level. So I hope this was helpful to you guys. Uh, I hope that you hit that subscribe button and see me on the next episode of Coffee and Compost.